I'm absolutely excited to present some of the work that we do in Germany at the University of Bremen, at, which we also do together with Peter Dorenstein. And in fact, I would like to follow up a little bit on his key message. So if we would like to understand the nature of biological processes, if we would like to understand or create the virtual cell, then we actually need to understand the machinery, the chemical machinery which is behind the cell and all the biological processes. And uh, to make this message clear, I would like to show this video, which is one of the first motion pictures created 140 years ago. And the question was asked here, is actually a moment of time where the horse is totally off the ground? And to answer this question, this very simple question, uh, uh, a person has created a way to show, to film first this movie and then actually to go through this movie. And uh, with this, he was able to answer, let me try, no. So he was able to answer actually that yes, the horse can be totally off the ground. And if we would like actually now to raise much more complex question of the virtual cell, understand the cellular machinery, we should actually also provide the tools which can actually capture the molecular snapshots of biological systems, including all molecules at some moment of time. And I will show today the way to do this in a spatially resolved manner using imaging mass spectrometry. And imaging mass spectrometry is a relatively new analytical technique developed 15 years ago, and it is spatially resolved, it is untargeted, that means we can analyze a lot of molecules, hundreds, thousands of molecules in a one run. So it is label free, we don't need to put any labels to attach any labels to our molecules to, to get it done, and it's totally multi-purpose, and I'll show you today several examples how it can be used. And currently, it is actually quite well spreading to medicine, biology, whatever, proteomics, metabolomics, and use it. it is used for biomarker discovery, new drugs analysis, for example, with Peter. We are working on developing of new antibiotics with this technique, and, um, and digital histology, a lot of interesting applications. What is actually 2D imaging mass spectrometry? So here I will show you how it can be used for uh, analysis of a tissue section. So we take a thin tissue section, we apply a matrix, and then we go in a rasterized way over our section. And for each pixel, we acquire one mass spectrum. And one mass spectrum represents abundance of hundreds or thousands of molecules at this pixel. What's interesting, actually, we can think of this data set as a bunch of spectra. But we can take another viewpoint. We can think of this data set as a data cube, so that if we fix one M of Z value, one molecular mass, then actually we have a map of abundance of this molecule in our section. And uh, this is why this mass spectrometry, when it becomes imaging mass spectrometry, you can really image the abundance, spatial abundance of thousands of molecules in one run. Definitely the data set is huge, up to uh, several hundreds of gigabytes. So now I would like to make it even more complex. I would like to show how it can be used for 3D. So uh, the current protocol for 3D is to really this section, some uh, sample, then afterwards to do 2D imaging mass spectrometry for each section, and then afterwards we need to merge it back to 3D model. That means it's, it's, it's very simple, but if we remember of that movie, which was made 200 or 140 years ago, it was made with several photographs, actually, being positioned in different spaces. So, and here, this is the protocol that we, we, de we developed together with Peter Dorenstein, and we applied it, for example, for this system, to study the interaction between bacteria and fungi. And it was very interesting to see that if we consider a bacteria colony here and fungi colony here, then with this technique, we see that this uh, fungi, it's actually secretes some molecule which is goes, goes deep into the agar, somehow making a wall protecting the fungi from the molecules which are inhibited by the bacterial colony. And uh, here you can really see that, and the, the, this red 
either surfaces, they show the localization of this protective uh, molecule which protects fungi from the, from the uh, bacteria colony. We can do the same for organs. So we can take an organ, we can section it, and then afterwards we can analyze each section with imaging mass spec, and we can reconstruct the 3D model of the, the whole tissue, and this is what I call a molecular snapshot. You have an organ, and for this organ, at that moment of time, you know all the molecules which were there and where they were. And here, so we applied automatic segmentation, image segmentation, and we were able to reconstruct, actually, this is mouse, mouse kidney, and we were able to reconstruct the anatomical structures of this mouse kidney. And uh, if we overlay them with a MRI, then we see that it's really very nice. It gives us a very nice overview of the anatomy of the kidney. But then we can come back to the molecules, and this is the ultimate question. Where such molecules are located, which are, or which are the molecules which are co-localized with this anatomical region, or this molecule which is co-localized with this anatomical region, or this one, this one. And once again, in this data set, which is 200 gigabytes, in this data set we have information about thousands of molecules and their spatial localization. But this is the ultimate question, not the spatial segmentation or nice images, but where actually are the molecules which are of interest to us. Now I would like to switch the gears a little bit and talk not about imaging mass spectrometry, but a new technique which we are developing with uh, Peter Dorenstein, which we started to call surface mass spectrometry. And uh, the aim of this project is to really understand the localization of molecules, various molecules, starting from metabolites to proteins, on a human skin. And uh, here, so what we've done, we collected the mass spectra for all possible spots of the skin, and then we, we did a kind of 3D modeling, and now we're doing visualization, data analysis, and definitely it should be followed up with biochemical analysis. Hopefully we'll get some relevant biological results. And now I'd like to show you some of, the, of these results, which are kind of preliminary, but uh, I hope that they will be exciting to you as they're exciting to me. So this is the visualization which shows the localization of molecules on their human skin. So the intensity here is in intensity or abundance or concentration of molecules is encoded with a color. The blue color means low intensity or low abundance. Red color means high abundance. And here we see um, molecular maps or surface maps for a molecule with this molecular weight, quite low one, and we see that it's perfectly localized on the shoulders. And we have some evidence that um, yeah, and here we, we see actually the, the mass spectrum, and we see actually the peak, which is really small, which is, uh, represents this molecule. We can see other molecules as well. One molecule which is localized in this area, or another molecule which has a kind of interest in localization. It has high abundance on the fingers and on the toes. And now, actually, to make clear that what kind of data we're dealing with, the vast amount of data we're dealing with, I will show you a movie where here I'm scanning through all possible molecular masses, or all possible molecules. And uh, at the same time, here I'm plotting the localization of these molecules in the same way how it was described on the previous slide. And you see that we just went through 10, 10 of peaks, but we've got a lot of information. And this is what differs this technique from other techniques. We've got a lot of information, but we've got a lot of challenges as well. And I would like to highlight some of the challenges. And especially, I would like to highlight the challenges which actually go beyond this field, beyond the field of image and mass spectrometry. And I think the main challenges are integration. Integration with other imaging modalities, integration with other omics information, genomics, proteomics, with the omics portals like PDB, other portals, and also with pathway analysis. We'd like to, to do automatic pathway analysis based on this data. How to actually create bioatlases, which will encompass this huge amount of inf information, make it accessible with WebGL or with another techniques. And uh, these are some of the challenges, actually, which we'll be addressing in a huge European project, which I'm coordinating in Europe. But University of California, San Diego, is also taking part, surprisingly. Um, and I would like to say many thanks to people who contribute to these results, in particular to UCSD, Peter Dorenstein, and also my lab at University of Bremen and other universities and uh, research centers which really contributed to these results. Thank you very much.